Hello and welcome to a bonus episode of Eddie's Workshop. Um, for those of you who don't know, I recorded uh, a number of these on Twitch uh, early 2020, uh, coming through all the different stages of the development process for a tabletop role-playing game at Omics Path Publishing. Uh, and uh, they've been going up on YouTube slowly. Um, in fact, in uh, August, we finally got all the rest of them up. But um, one thing I noticed after I did them is, uh, you know, the coronavirus hit, and uh, a lot of people I noticed were struggling with how to work from home and how to self-motivate or organize their workflow. Um, so uh, that's one thing that I started doing some one-on-one -on -one, uh, classes online with uh, different developers and freelancers. And then uh, more people started talking and more people started talking. Um, and eventually I was doing classes with about uh, 15 to 20 people. And so I thought it might be good to actually record a video where I go through everything I talk about in those classes for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, for those who actually did take a class with me, this might be a really good refresher for uh, what you went through on, to remind you if you need to kind of go over it again. Um, and also for people who uh, don't even work at Omics Path Publishing, people who are just wanting to break in or are even working in tabletop role-playing games but are just kind of struggling to, to figure out a way to motivate yourself, especially when you're self-employed or a freelancer like me. So, um, uh, this is, I'm going to kind of go over uh, my process techniques that I have developed over the past several years. But before I do, a couple of caveats. Uh, the first is that this is only my technique. Um, I have learned throughout the years that lots of people uh, have different ways of engaging. Uh, some people, you know, your, your, your brain just works differently or um, your situation isn't quite set up to work the same way as mine is. So, uh, these are all meant to be a starting point for you to think about how you want to organize and structure your own work and your own workflow. So don't take any of this as gospel. It's just what works for me. And I'll try to, where I can, not only talk about why I use these techniques, uh, but also some alternatives in case uh, you have a different workflow you want to explore. Uh, and the second is um, a number of these things do come from Agile methodology, which is uh, a form of software development. Um, I picked up a lot of this from my time working on the World Darkness MMO at TCP. Uh, so that's kind of was my starting point for programming. And a lot of the, the terminology and language has kind of stuck around over the years that I've used them. So um, I, I, I try to uh, reduce the amount of a specific concrete language. So if you are familiar with Agile methodology, you're probably going to grit your teeth because I'm using some words incorrectly. And if you're not familiar with Agile methodology, you know, you may feel like I'm throwing a bunch of buzzwords at you. Um, I, I, I want you to understand, these are just uh, the language I use to kind of explain these things, but I will try to cover everything in simple language so you don't feel like you're completely lost with it. Uh, so uh, a lot of this stems from stuff that I've had to create for myself when I went to full-time freelance in 2014. So I've been using variations on these methods uh, for definitely six years and actually even before that when um, I was still kind of working from home a lot like at nights and weekends I started to pick up bits and pieces of this so um, I've been working and refining on these for close to a decade and the methods and uh, techniques I started out with are not the ones I'm using now I'll probably use different ones and, and evolve them again in years from now um, in fact, even during uh, the coronavirus uh, situation, I found that I was modifying and adjusting as we go on. So, uh, again, I'll kind of cover everything uh, as much as I can um, and give alternatives where I can. Uh, so, uh, let me kind of show you a few things. The first one I want to talk about is uh, the Pomodoro method. Um, the Pomodoro technique uh, is something that was created uh, by Francesco Cirillo. Um, and uh, it sounds very complicated and ornate. Uh, you can see there's all sorts of, of options here, but really it boils down to a few key steps. Um, choosing a task you'd like to get done, uh, you set the Pomodoro, which is a kind of tomato timer, uh, for 25 minutes. You work on the task till the Pomodoro rings. Uh, when it rings, you put a check mark on a piece of paper or otherwise track that you've made progress. You take a short break, and then every four Pomodoros, you take a longer break. Um, and uh, this is kind of the building block for the techniques that I, I use and uh, create when I develop my workflow. Uh, and the reason is that... Um, 
particularly when you are, are self-employed, you may have a lot of things going on simultaneously. Uh, like, for example, in tabletop role-playing games, I may have two or three different books going on at the same time. Uh, or I may have uh, uh, several projects going on. They're all kind of roughly simultaneous. And so it can be overwhelming. So this is kind of the first step is um, reminding yourself to do one task at a time. And with this technique, um, not only does it make sure that you're uh, uh, doing things in 25-minute chunks, but also that you're only doing one task at a time. Uh, the, the, the key of it is choose one, choose a task you like to get done, and that's ideally a task that will take about 25 minutes. So already you're starting to see kind of a, a core structure here, which is that tasks are generally going to fit into at least increments of 25 minutes. Uh, so when you start thinking about this uh, as um, check your email, uh, uh, that could be a 25-minute task if you're checking all of your email, but checking specific email, responding to a specific email may not be necessarily 25 minutes. So you kind of bundle them together into a 25-minute task, whereas something like write a chapter is going to be lots and lots of 25-minute bursts. And we'll get into how to manage all that later, but the key step right now is whatever you have in front of you, pick one of those and do that for 25 minutes. Um, and uh, I mean, that's, that's really it. And it can be as simple as that. It can be you get an egg timer or a tomato timer or whatever and do it for 25 minutes. Um, then you take, uh, traditionally is a five minute break um, and then you have a longer break for about 15 minutes. But there's lots of different resources you can use. And this is one of them. This is a, a, a website called Tomato Timer. And it did, it's basically just what I said. Um, your, your actual Pomodoro is 25 minutes here. You start and stop. Uh, you can switch to a short break, about five minutes. Uh, and then every four of those Pomodoros you do, you take a longer break of 15 minutes. And it'll just go through the timer. It will ding when it's done or give you a notification on your screen. Uh, you can minimize this you know, go back to working on whatever you're working on, and then you'll come back, you'll see a little timer on the top, and then come back here, and the timer's still going down. So that's one way you can do it. You can get apps. Uh, you can get uh, things on your phone. Uh, you can even get uh, something like this called musicproductivity.com, where actually you log into your Spotify account, and it will play music for 25 minutes, and then the music will you know, stop. And then after five minutes, we push the button again, and it starts to know 25 minutes, and you see kind of little breakdowns here. So there's lots of different ways that you can look at this or explore it. But the key thing to remember is you want those 25-minute bursts. It can be 55 minutes if you want, uh, if you want longer periods of time. Um, it can be shorter for 15-minute bursts, whatever works for you. But there's a few main things that you get from this Pomodoro technique. Um, the first is you're only doing one thing at a time. Uh, uh, as humans in the 21st century, we all like to think that we're fantastic multitaskers. And it, the truth is we're just not. Human beings are terrible at multitasking. We're good at doing one thing really well at a time. Um, and if we feels like we're doing several things at once, usually we've chunked those tasks together into one in our head. So, for example, when you first learn to drive a car... You're, you're constantly, okay, I have to put it in gear, I have to turn it on, I have to check the lights, I have to check the mirrors, I have to push go, I have to push stop, I have to turn the wheel. Those all feel like separate tasks. And initially when you're driving, it can be overwhelming. Over time, as you get used to driving, your brain starts to chunk them together into one task, which is drive a car. And you may find over the years when you drive, eventually you get into the car and you drive home from work if it's a route you've done a hundred times before, that you don't even realize you're doing it until you're home. Uh, but that's not your brain multitasking. It's your brain has learned to simplify and streamline those tasks down into one goal. So if you've got a lot of work going on, if you're writing for five minutes, then jumping over and checking email, then bouncing in Discord, and then you have to check social media real quick, and then you take a phone call, and then someone pings you and it's a messenger, your brain's constantly shifting between those. And, and unless you're used to doing all that, like you say your job is social media administration, or brain, you've gotten very, very good at bouncing those, those specific tasks. Generally speaking, you're going to lose momentum and you're going to lose focus on each of those. So the goal really is to get to the timer Say, this is the thing I'm working on for 25 minutes and focus on that. Uh, 
Now, there's a couple of, of rules that can go with this. Um, uh, uh, if you finish your task before 25 minutes are done, you can stop or you can jump on to right away to another task. Uh, that's up to you. Um, also, if you uh, have what's called failing a Pomodoro, where it's just you know, someone calls you or something else pops up, you have to go to the door, whatever, um, and you just fail the Pomodoro. You can just stop it and then start a new one. Um, and, and it's okay to occasionally fail, but you can really do well by having those 25 minute chunks um, to, to try to get back to them whenever you can. The other thing that's beneficial about the Pomodoro method uh, is if you do find you are easily distracted, um, if you say you're writing a chapter of a book and uh, you start doing some quick research for the section you're writing, and then next thing you know, you're done on Wikipedia hole, when that timer goes off, that can pull you back out of that distraction. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to do this, but I ended up spending 15 of my 25 minutes just reading Wikipedia. Um, you're not going to lose hours and hours and hours. There's going to be something that's constantly interrupting you. So while it can sometimes be frustrating to have that interruption, it's good long-term because you can avoid going down unproductive rabbit holes. Uh, and it, you, it, it, there's always at least a time ago, every 25 minutes, it reminds you, hey, are you still doing the thing you're supposed to be working on? Um, so that's kind of the moment-to-moment -moment flow of uh, working on tasks. And, and the task, the idea that the task is kind of central is key to the bigger picture of what it's like to work and manage your workflow. Uh, so what I'm showing you now is a website called Trello. It is a free website, um, and you can set up a board like this for no cost whatsoever. I've been using Trello for free for seven or eight years now. Uh, and on here, I have a whole bunch of example tasks. And there's numbers and lanes and all that. And it looks overwhelming at the moment. But for the right now, the big thing I want you to realize is that each of these cards, each of these little boxes here, is a task. And that's your key basic point. Um, these are all tasks that you could theoretically work on one at a time. And... Uh, if you look at this, there's three kind of uh, what are called lanes in uh, uh, the methodology I'm using, um, which you can work in. Uh, so first of all, there's the do today lane. Uh, and these are all the tasks you're going to work on today. Um, there's the done lane over here, which are all the tasks you've completed for the day. And then there's in progress, uh, which is the task you're working on right now. You can only ever have one task in this in-progress lane. And that goes back to what I was talking before about uh, the Pomodoro technique, um, which is that if you're only focusing one thing at a time, this is the thing that matters to you right now. Um, and it, you don't have to use software like this. Um, you can use post-it notes on a wall. Um, I did that myself for a long time. So you can use a whiteboard, you can use a bullet journal uh, to write down tasks. Uh, uh, how you actually track the tasks for secondary, the main thing is that um, you're only looking at one at a time. So say like you have a written list uh, of, of tasks. Uh, so then it's just the, okay, um, I put a, a, a star next to what I'm working on now, and then I cross it off the list when I'm done. That's another way of tracking it, and that's fine too. But it helps to have a visual reminder of this is the one thing you're working on. The reason why I like uh, methods like the Trello board here uh, or post-it notes is that they're movable. Uh, so for example, if uh, something happened in the middle of the class I was teaching and I needed to do something else, I can move a task back here. I could pull something else up and start working on that. So I don't lose the track of that task. It's still there um, and I can replan as it need be. Um, but again, whatever works for you is is valid but this is kind of your day-to-day -day. the 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 pomodoro method is your moments moment this is your day-to-day -day, uh, task um and then beyond that you get to uh, uh the larger scale tasks and that's where the other three lanes come in um you notice i have a a, a lane here on the right it's called someday um, and this is where you just put any ideas that come up, any tasks that come up. It's, it's at some point I want to write a story. I want to write a novel. I want to go on vacation, whatever. Anything that relates to your workflow, just put it in there and not worry about it. At some point you will get to it. It's just there to, so you remember it. You don't have to 
try to keep it in the back of your head. This is another key part of what I do in my processes is I try to offload things as much as possible because I want to get to the point where the one thing I'm working on right now in the moment is the one task I've committed to. Right now, I'm recording this video. I'm not thinking about the 50 other things that are on my mind because they're tracked in my process in some way. And the Sunday Lane is a great way of doing, here's just a thought I have. At some point, I probably want to do this, but then it goes there and you don't have to worry about it again. Then you have your backlog. Uh, your backlog here on the far left uh, is these are things that are coming up and you've broken down. These are individual known tasks that you need to resolve and deal with. Uh, and then finally, uh, the this week one is the larger version of uh, do today, which is what you're going to work on this week. Um, some people prefer um, what are called sprints at two weeks, uh, which is basically, you know, you plan for two weeks. Some people plan for a month. Uh, some people plan for a few days. Whatever works for you, I have found over the years that planning week to week makes more natural sense. I work Monday through Friday, so uh, it makes more sense for me to put everything over to give about a week's work worth of work, put it in there, and then each day I pull over a number of tasks that are relevant to what I'm work on that day. And then I get into the day in progress done cycle. Uh, so we, I, I talked about tasks a lot, but I haven't really explained kind of what that really means because it seems straightforward you know we a lot of us have over the course of our lives run into various forms of a to-do list um you know take out the garbage uh read a book um you know clean the garage what have you uh the problem is that when you just write down tasks uh they look equal on the page so uh check email looks on the page very similar to write novel but those are two very different scopes of work um, those are two very different, uh, what we call size or weight of tasks. Um, it will take you probably you know, anywhere from a few minutes to maybe an hour or so to check your email, depending on how bad your email is, where it could take you a year or more to write a novel. But on the page, they're just equal to check email, check, you know, write novel are still about the same size, even about the same number of letters. Uh, so um, instead, you have to artificially create weight to tasks. Um, and that's what all these numbers are. Um, uh, one method I used for a long time that would just tell me instead is to use these numbers as actual Pomodoros. So um, let's say that uh, it's going to take me uh, an hour to uh, record this class. I could put down two Pomodoros. And so it's the, okay, it's going to take me 50 minutes of work to do this. And so I can track those as actual Pomodoros. And then, so if I have... Uh, uh, eight hours in my day, theoretically, I would have um, something like uh, uh, 13 to 15 Pomodoros because there's breaks in there and whatnot. Um, uh, th one thing I found in reality is that uh, there's been studies done on actual productivity. Uh, and if people found that in an eight hour work day, you're probably only going to get about five to six hours of actual productive work because uh, there are things like meetings that pop up, um, tr going from one place to another in the physical office space, uh, uh, taking breaks, taking lunch, what have you. Um, over the years with self-employment, I found that actually it's closer to five hours. And during uh, COVID, when things were very, very frustrating and uh, anxious and exhausting, I actually found my productivity was really closer to four and sometimes even three. Uh, so... That's one thing that the Pomodoro technique can really help with is uh, helping you to get a sense of where your time's actually going, how much time you're actually spending. Uh, uh, so one way you can weight your tasks is if you have a good sense of roughly how long it will take, uh, then you actually can put a number on there of it will take this number of Pomodoros to do. And then uh, those checks uh, that I mentioned, um, you can actually put those on your cards. Like, okay, I'm supposed this will take... Uh, 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 it, it, it says one, but let's say it says two for the moment. Um, then each, every 20 minutes, I could put a check on the actual post-it note, or I can put a note on here um, to, to indicate how many I've actually accomplished. And then once the, all those numbers are filled, I can move the task over to done and call it a day. Um, another way of method of waiting, which I do use now, um, is using a much more kind of abstract uh, uh, point system uh using a Fibonacci sequence or a pseudo Fibonacci sequence. Um, so zero, one, two, three, five, eight, a 13. 
And uh, what you do is um, those weights, uh, you just assign a, a vaguer sense of how long something was taken. This is really good for work where you're not entirely sure how long it will take. Uh, so in this case, um, I have a, a zero for, uh, like this one is a task that will take me almost no time at all. It will take me less than a Pomodoro to do. Um, and I only have it separate because it's, it's just be good to track it as a specific level. So like, uh, in this case, let's say I had, uh, a check Google meet and make cards. Um, I could pull one over in the middle of a Pomodoro, get that one done, put it to done, pull the other one over, continue working on that, put that to done. Um, or I could stop the Pomodoro and make a new one, whichever made sense to me. But the point is, is that in my workload, it's probably less than a Pomodoro. Uh, 0.5 is about a pomo of work. Um, uh, one is about a quarter of my day. Uh, uh, two is about a third of my day. Three points is about half my day. Uh, and then five is a full day. Uh, and that helps me because um, uh, uh, for something like, say, uh, uh, editing a chapter, I have here redlining, uh, but editing a chapter or not, um, chapters can be of different sizes, uh, and also some chapters are going to be harder or easier to redline than others. So while it might seem that it's the, okay, I have a thousand words, so it takes me X amount of time, the reality is it's like that thousand words can be very different depending on what kind of chapter it is or, or how much work I have to do on it. Uh, so I could, but I can say a thousand word chapters could take me probably a quarter of my day at the most. Um, so I could put a point on that and I'm reasonably confident they'll take somewhere between five minutes and a little over an hour or so. Uh, whereas if it's a, a, a hundred page chapter and it's massive, it's going to take me a day or more. So then I could put a five on that and realize that's a big project and I need to be prepared for that and I can plan for that. Uh, so already what's happening is no matter which method you use, you notice that uh, I can look at those and have a different relationship, a different connection to each of those tasks. I know looking at that this, is, this task here, this check Google Meet task with zero on it, is going to be a very fast, very light task. Whereas Redline Chapter 1 is a task that's a little meatier, something that's going to take more of my time. And something like write chapter four is a pretty big project and it's probably going to be half my day and I can plan around the fact that it's a, that's a, a, a significant chunk of my time. So that flat list of tasks looks more understandable and can be more intelligently engaged with and planned with based on what those numbers mean. Um, you'll also notice a few wrinkles here. Uh, for some of these have question marks, um, which is I just don't know how long it's going to take. Um, ideally, usually question marks are, are in the someday uh, things. I, I don't know. Th this is eventually I make this game. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but ideally, you want to have them closer to a number by the time you're into this flow. But occasionally, that's just not possible. Um, so you can still have a question mark on there. But once you're in the thick of it, if you finished it, you probably should retroactively put weight on it so you know how much you've done in your done column and you track how much where your work is going. Um, another thing is uh, uh, some of these, uh, I have little red lines, uh, you know, are marked as blocked. Uh, uh, sometimes a, you can intend to work on a task, but for some reason you can't move ahead, and I find it's valuable to track those. Um, maybe you're waiting on material from a collaborator. Uh, maybe there's a technological issue and you're waiting for a bug fix to come in. Um, or maybe it's just a case of you just physically don't have something in front of you to be able to actually start work on that. Uh, you're missing a tool or you're missing an elements. Um, so if you can't make a movement, if you are waiting for an external force to resolve before it can move on that task, it's good to track as blocked because that way you can see that's something I can't work on right now. So your brain is not telling you Oh, you need to work on that. Because one thing I discovered in my own processes is that if I didn't have something tracked as block, I was like, why am I working on that? Oh, that's right, because I'm waiting for blah, blah. And so there's this moment of, of feeling guilty for not working on it, then realizing I can't work on it, and then uh, time goes by, and then it's the, wait, that thing that I was waiting on is resolved, so I could have started working on it, but I, I had in my head that I couldn't work on it. So by explicitly tracking it as something you block and then removing that note when you're ready to go ahead can really help to kind of just reduce the load on you trying to think about your task list. Uh, another one is, you know, some of these are marked as meetings. Um, for a long time, I didn't track meetings. 
uh, uh, particular meetings that were relatively uh, uh, common meetings. Uh, but I've since come around to actually tracking meetings because, again, it helps me to see where my time goes. Uh, one of the benefits of the done column is not only does it show you how much work done during the day, but also shows you where your time's going as you work on things. If something becomes a much bigger task than expected, you can change your weight on that task and go, okay, it didn't feel like it got much done, but I also can look at it and go, but yeah, but that one task was much bigger than I expected. And I can really recognize that I still did a lot of work even if my goal is not accomplished. Uh, um, so there, and there's our kind of an art to breaking down tasks. Um, people are going to weight these tasks differently. Uh, uh, so for someone like me who has been a writer for over 20 years now, uh, I can write quicker. I can uh, edit much more efficiently than other people who are just starting out. So my weights are going to be lower. I can also have more experience in moving between projects very, very quickly. So um, I can also reduce my weight and shuffle around moving on from one book to another, for example, or doing research on a project. I can do that much more quickly because I've got experience in it. So my weights can go down. What's uh, I track uh, what's called velocity, um, which is how fast you can accomplish things. Um, for people who are just starting out in that field, it's going to be much longer and much harder. Uh, so each person is going to weight those tasks. So that's one thing kind of on our side is you have to be honest with what you can accomplish. And if you're just starting out with something like this, you may not know what that answer is. So the, the answer is guess. But then another value of this done column is that once you're done at the end of the week, you can look at it and say, okay, I found it actually took me on average one Pomodoro to write 50 words. So now you know if you do have additional writing tasks in the future, okay, I can estimate on the fact that I noticed in the past week I did 50 words, so I can plan as if that will take me about 50 words. And if you're finding you've continually under or overestimated, then you can recalibrate based on the new information. If after a few months you're like, I keep actually hitting my targets faster than expected, well, maybe your velocity is closer to 75 words or 100 words. I'm up to 500 words every 25 minutes now, but there are some books where it's hard to get 500 words out and some books where I can do even up to 700. Um, but don't hold yourself to my standards, hold yourself to your standards. Look at your own work, look at your own numbers and plan based off of those. Um, so that's one thing to think about is look at your actual velocity, how fast you accomplish things, track that number, and plan to the reality of what you have in front of you, not, the, not what you want to do. It would be nice if you wrote a thousand words every half an hour, but the reality is you write 50. Plan for that. It's better to be a little conservative and consistently hit your goals than to wildly over plan and feel like you've got nothing accomplished. Uh, so look at the reality of what you have here. The other thing is when you're breaking down tasks, you notice I don't have, uh, like I have write chapter three, write chapter four. I don't have write book as a task. I don't have write novel as a task. I don't have edit novel as a task. Uh, you want to try to get tasks down to ideally something that you could do in a day or less. That's really the goal. You want to show that every day you're moving something over to done unless something has gone wrong with your plan. Because if you don't, if you're always doing something like I have a, say I had a bright novel here, if I was constantly moving it here and then moving it back and moving it here and moving it back and moving it here and moving it back, that, 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 I get no useful data out of that, but also I don't get any satisfaction of crossing things off. And you have the satisfaction of checking things that have accomplished them. So it's better to be able to have smaller tasks that you can move over as necessary. Um, and so for a book, there's natural kind of, well, each chapter is a weight. Uh, but if chapters are particularly dense and complicated, or if you, you just flat out can't get anything down, make arbitrary uh, motions. Um, for my writing assignments, sometimes I, I have write chapter three or four, I'll have just write 2,000 words today, and that's my task. Uh, and it doesn't matter where those 2,000 words fit in, but that's my goal is trying to get 2,000 words. Um, Sometimes it's work on this for two hours, and that's my task. Uh, the actual breakdown doesn't matter as long as it's something that you can track and can be accomplished in less than a day. Uh, so that's another time where these question marks can kind of come in is uh, at the moment, let's say design cybernetic system. I don't know how much work it's going to take. 
But as I start working on it, I may go, okay, now that I'm looking at it, I realize it's going to take me this, and then there's this subtask and this subtask. So maybe it may break down into three or four smaller tasks, and those have more concrete, understandable uh, scores or weights that I can put onto them. Uh, so uh, to kind of recap, uh, that is tasks are kind of the basic building blocks of, of managing your workflow. Uh, you want to try to uh, work on one task at a time uh, uh, for a set period of time, you know, 25 minutes, an hour, whatever works for you. Uh, take short breaks between those so that you can actually disconnect so you're not constantly exhausting yourself on one task and grinding yourself out on one task. Um, plan for the day, what tasks you want to work on for the day. Don't worry about the tasks that aren't related to your daily tasks and try to get those accomplished. Uh, and then... Once you have a sense of how much weight you can put on tasks, you can start to plan for your month, your week, whatever, and then put things into your backlog as needed. So that's where the backlog becomes useful is uh, once you plan for the week, everything else goes in the backlog. I don't worry about what's coming up after this week. But then as you look ahead, uh, if you realize, okay, I can do 20 points worth of tasks in a week and you have – 100 points in your backlog, you realize that you have work for the next five weeks. So if someone says, hey, can you work on something in a month? You could say, no, but I can do it in five weeks. You can start to get a sense of anticipating and, and predicting what your workload's going to be once you get your velocity down. But all of that, all of that stems from the, the basis of working on one task at a time. You work on one task at a time, you get that accomplished. You work on the next task. At the end of the day, you look at the tasks you accomplished. You plan for the following day based on how much you got done. At the end of the week, you look at how much you got done for the week. You plan for the next week based on how much you got done. And then at some points during the week, uh, uh, I usually use uh, the end of the week, like the last very end of the day Friday. Um, look, at, you know, look at what your upcoming weeks are going to be and plan accordingly. As tasks pop up, uh, uh, jot them down, put them into your system somewhere, and then forget about them. If it's the, I need to, this book, or this, this, let's say um, someone had to, needs to be in an emergency to write a chapter. I can replan. Like, wait, I, I can estimate how much this is going to put it into my week. Stuff I was getting this week, I move it to backlog, and I'll pick them up next week. Um, uh, or if it's the, at some point in time, I really need to uh, redo my website. Uh, then I put that in my backlog, I estimate that, but then I forget about it, and I'll get to it when I can. And every week I can look at, is it time to work at the website yet? Well, no, I really need to work on this other thing first. You can constantly prioritize, basically. But what this is preventing you is it's preventing you from trying to think of absolutely everything you need to work on and really keeping them all in your head at once. Uh, uh, so you have this, these, these sticky notes up or your Trello board here, and you could say, okay, I've tracked it. I know that at some point in time I need to do it, but I don't need to do it right now. I need to think about it right now. And then if something pops up where I need to go back to it or change that plan, I can. And sometimes tasks you put in the back line, it's like, oh, actually, I don't need to do this anymore. Just get rid of it. That's one of the things you have to worry about. And sometimes someone say, hey, I really need to work on something that's your backlog. And then you can go, okay, well, then I pull it over into the appropriate plan and work on it then. And you can slot it in. And, okay, maybe I won't get to work on that uh, book chapter I want to because I need to actually uh, uh, do an access now. Uh, so it's like you can take one task, move it aside, and put the task in. And as you build this flow, you can also prioritize on the fly. It's the, okay, well, these books are due in three weeks, so – I, either, I only have this week, next week, or the week after to work on them. Um, is there anything that's more important to that thing that's due in three weeks? If so, I'll work on those now, and I can wait till next week to work on those tasks that are due in three weeks. But if not, I'll work on them now and get those done and get them knocked out so that I can focus on things that are not as urgent as those tasks. Uh, but again, all of that comes from thinking about your work as individual tasks. Uh, and the last thing you know, I will recommend is that uh, as you're thinking about your workflows, you pick up any process, um, but as you start actually documenting how much work you have and how big your work is, it's going to be scary the first time you do it. It's going to seem like you have a million things to do, and they're all important. They're all due now. Um, understand that it's going to take time to get used to a new workflow or work management process. Uh, so if it feels like you're just failing at doing this, that, that's not how it's going. It's actually 
part of the, the learning of getting used to this method, but also just realizing where your time is going. Uh, the first time I did this, I felt like I was getting nothing accomplished because like, I, I spent all this time and then I, I get like maybe three or four tasks over. And over time, I learned partially it was because I was I was not breaking them down finely enough. Uh, and also because so much of my time was going into just wasted space. I was spending so much time uh, uh, screwing around in social media or worrying about checking my email or what have you. I wasn't in the moment working on one task at a time because I was constantly thinking of five different things and nothing got accomplished because I, cause I, I did five things badly as opposed to one thing well. Uh, so... Um, it's going to feel weird for a while and you may have a backlog that looks like it has 100 or 200 or 500 points. It could be a ridiculously huge amount of work. But again, the goal is that's all the work you could ever possibly do. And you don't have to do it all right now. What you have to work on right now is what's on your daily list. What you have to work on in this exact moment is what's the one task you've pulled over. Eventually, you will get through all 500 points. Don't worry. And you will eventually get through it all. But right now, work on your one-point task, your two-point task, your three-point task. That's the key thing. Uh, so that's basically it, is uh, try to break down your workload as much as possible and find ways to, to manage and keep track of everything. Um there's lots of different other kind of techniques and strategies uh, you can find. Um, usually when I do this class live, uh, I move into a Q&A and ask people have specific questions or they kind of want to dig into a larger topic. Um, so uh, if you have some of those, uh, you can go ahead and put comments uh, in, in the YouTube comments below. Um, if I see them, I'll try to answer them. You can also uh, uh, shoot me a Twitter. Uh, I'm at uh, Pugsteady, just like a uh, logo right there in the corner. Um, look down here. Uh, um, uh, you'll see the Pugsteady logo. Uh, just look for that spelling, all one word on Twitter. Uh, shoot me a, a tweet and I'll try to answer your question. Um, but also, if you have some friends that are in a similar situation, consider getting something like a, a Slack or a Discord together. Uh, and just kind of share notes and share thoughts uh, and try to keep each other honest and, and keep each other organized. Uh, because just having someone to talk to who understands your, your frustrations can be a huge help in trying to get things done. Uh, but no matter what, I hope this has been helpful in you to try to start your own explorations, start your own thinking about how to get your work alone resolved. Um, understand that it's a, a very difficult time right now. Everyone's struggling. Everyone's learning. Everyone's relearning how to do things. Uh, so don't be discouraged. Uh, this, the, the, hopefully this will help you to start to make positive progress towards getting your work done. So thank you very much for hanging out and get back to work.